Hi. So today we're talking about color harmonies. Um, color harmonies are basically just uh, colors that look great together. They're often used um, uh, ways of arranging color in um, tried and true uh, uh, assortments. So our project for next week, we are going to be creating six um, different compositions. You can use your um, paints if you'd like, you can do collage, you can use ink, you can do mixed medium, whatever is exciting for you. And you're gonna do six separate collages or paintings, um, and one to meet each of the harmonies that I give you, and I've sent that off to you uh, via email today. Um, the size is up to you, uh, but no smaller than six inch square. And this uh, process, um, sorry, this project will be worth 30 points instead of the normal 15. Okay, so um, first color harmony or um, color composition is the monochromatic. So whenever we have the word mon um, chromatic in, it always means color, mono meaning one. So a monochromatic harmony is just one color varying uh, uh, values and um, intensities. So here we have a Picasso painting. This is a monochromatic, one of his blue paintings. Um, so it's in all different um, variations of blue, right? So there is a great example of monochromatic, pretty straightforward, just one color, varying um, degrees of intensity and value. Okay, so here, we have a collage that a student did, which is a nice little non-objective collage. This is a monochromatic red collage. Um, it's an interesting thing though, because red has a very, uh, has a much less of a range of values um, because red becomes pink, right? When we add white. So it kind of becomes its own color and loses its identity, but we would still consider a painting that was done with reds and pinks all um, still monochromatic. It's interesting because blue, look at that, blue has, a, it maintains its color identity from light blue all the way up to midnight blue. So it has a very broad color identity. Whereas with red, we can lose that to pink, but this is still monochromatic. Pink is still part of red. Okay, um, here is a painted, um, project that a student did. And they did a great job on it. They actually did different paintings of the same design for the different, um, all of the different harmonies. But this was their uh, monochromatic. Now, yellow poses a problem for us because yellow loses its color identity when we add black to it. So here they were trying to get two darker values of yellow by adding black, but what happens when you add black to yellow is it becomes green. So it's a good thing to note because you get these wonderful, very natural, interesting greens, but this project didn't work for the assignment because this isn't monochromatic. This is actually yellow and green. You can't get to a really dark yellow um, without it becoming another color, uh, like brown or green if you add black. So this one doesn't work. But here is a wonderful collage that somebody made with found papers. They used some of the paper swatches that they had painted for the other projects. And then they used um, this cool mermaid tail that they found and um, put together all of these different pieces of cut paper to do a wonderful blue monochromatic. So all one color, all variations of blue. Notice different a lot of different value, a lot of different intensity, okay? So that's monochromatic. One color, oh, here's another one that's quite simple, but works well. You can see she actually used swatches from um, Lowe's, the paint swatches, as well as found um, images, and actually, no, she didn't use any hand painted, but it's very simple, um, little design, but it works for monochromatic. Okay, so um, the next one is complementary harmonies, and we just did our project on complementaries. 
So any of the colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel are gonna be your complementaries, and we know those go really well together. They heighten each other when they're next to each other, and they neutralize each other. But um, let's see, here's some examples. Here's a collage that a student did. Basically, they cut out the um, models, faces, all the skin, and um, added this wonderful like plant textures in there and did this really interesting uh, red and green complementary collage. Let's see. The student that did the paintings did this uh, orange and blue. And we find complementary colors a lot in advertising and in um, marketing. So here's just one example. I'm guessing you're probably seeing complementary colors everywhere but they pop off the shelf when you have a bunch of um, similar pr uh, products lined up on a, in a um, row on a shelf and you wanna try to sell them, uh, you're gonna get a nice uh, pop when you have complementary colors next to each other. Um, okay, oh, and here's my monochromatic label. There's a all red, variations of red. Okay, so let's see, what's next? The next one you're gonna do is analogous harmony. So analogous colors are colors that are next to or near each other on the color wheel. And basically these are uh, related colors. So for instance, green, yellow, and orange would be an analogous color scheme. Usually it's three colors. And so they're related because green and orange both have yellow as a parent color. Right? Or we could do, say, purple, blue, and green. Those are all our cool colors, and they're all related because blue is apparent to, is in both the violet and the green. Or violet, red, and orange. And those are related because red is in both orange and violet. So those colors always look well together. They're like a family. They're related and they're harmonious. So let's see. Here's a student example. They did purple red, and red, um, kind of going into the orange. I think they could have taken this one a little further. It's more two colors than three colors. I would have liked to have seen some more color. Here's one that's done with um, green, yellow, and blue. And let's see if I can find, oh, and so here are some labels. Um, packaging, so we have orange, yellow, and green here in this analogous um, package. And then we have here, we have uh, red, orange, and yellow, basically, in this uh, package for noodles. Um, oh, here's another example of a student project where they used found papers all on the warm side. They're analogous colors. Okay, and then the last one is the most complex. And there are others too, which you'll probably learn about if you take a um, uh, Art 11B, the second semester, which is much more intensive with color. But the triad colors are three colors that are equidistant from each other on the color wheel. So they create a triangle. So if you'll notice, our primaries, yellow, red, and blue create a triangle there's three colors in between each. They're equidistant on the color wheel. So the primaries, yellow, red, and blue, are uh, one of our um, triad harmonies. These colors look great together, even in neutral version, or probably even more so in neutral version. But you'll find that in marketing, they use this primary triad a lot. Um, and in children's toys, it kind of feels a little bit like romper room. Uh, preschool, kindergarten, little kids' toys, but look at this. My mustard, red, yellow, and blue, triad composition, or color composition. Um, bumblebee, clam juice, mint, clam. I just went in my cupboard and pulled out things. Um, there we've got that red, yellow, and blue. Um, my barilla pasta, red, yellow, and blue, right? Um, tends to look pretty happy. It can also work really well for interior design, just maybe not in its brightest shade. So if you're thinking blue grays, brick reds, mustard yellows, those colors look beautiful together. 
Okay, so let's see. Another triad would be our secondary colors. So we've got green, orange, and violet. And this, if you're aware of it, you'll start to see this being used as um, a color harmony in a lot of different places. Um, here's this student did the orange, green, and violet painted triad. I don't have a lot of other examples of student work there, but um, yeah, you, I would love to see you try some of the others. Some that are a little more sophis uh, sophisticated and less common would be yellow, green, red, orange, blue, violet. That's a triad. Those colors look great together. So when I'm planning a painting, I will actually think to myself, what is my color scheme going to be? Sometimes it's a complementary color scheme. Sometimes I use the triads. Uh, a lot of times I'll use, I love the purple, green, and orange. Um, I've also used that to um, do my um, landscaping. So, or I think about these harmonies. So my front yard is analogous color scheme when it comes to the plantings that we did. So we have reds and violets and blues. Um, so those colors are related to each other on the color wheel. So anyways, the last two, so that's, you're gonna do a monochromatic harmony, a complementary harmony, analogous, triad harmony, and then the last two, you can use colors of your choice, but you're going to work with the contrast of light and dark. Now, I don't want this to be um, achromatic, okay? So it's not white, black, and gray. These are colors. Think about light colors and dark colors. And then the sixth one is a contrast of bright and dull. Remember that we can use bright colors to create focal point, right? So I want you to think about the more neutral colors and then where you would have pops of bright color. Remember, we talked about this last week, all colors have three properties. They have their hue. Hue is a synonym for color. What color is it, right? And even, you know, a dark blue, a very neutral blue is still blue, as is a electric pure blue, right? They're still blue or a light, light blue. They're just, they're just differences in the intensity and in the value. The way that we lower the intensity of color, pure color, is we add white, gray, black, or the complement, okay? Um, and then the way that we, well, let's look at this. All colors in their pure form have a value, right? So our colors down on this end of the color wheel have much darker values than what's up here. If we took a black and white photograph, we might have twos. These might be twos on a scale of one to 10 in the value scale. These might be like fives, right? Fives or sixes and down here we might have eights or nines, right? So thinking about hue and value, some colors are hard to get up to the darker values. These colors down here are pretty easy. All you have to do is add white, but then we remember that red becomes pink, so it loses its identity. Okay, um, let me see. I think that that's all that I wanted to tell you. I wanted to be sure that you meet um, us at 9.30 on Wednesday. I'll send out an email, but we're gonna have another um, class meeting at 9.30 Wednesday, okay? So that I'd like you to get started on these and then I can help you or answer questions on Wednesday. Okay, I hope you're doing well. See you soon, bye.